Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 32 of Caspi Road to Exploration. And we start where we left off, on the surface of the moon. We need to leave and, well, go home so that we can return science and this tourist and get all of the money. Because today, we are plowing forward towards getting our science center. And I mean really just going right for it, because we need money. Because we need more science. Because... Oh no, we don't need more. We need more science center so we can spend science and buy bigger and better rockets and s bigger and crazier things and fuel mining ability would be great. Because I'm thinking, rather than shipping all my fuel up on rockets, I'm just gonna put an asteroid in low carbon orbit. How did I not think of that, man? Jesus. Anyway, but yeah, that is my plan for fueling. So it looks like we're coming up just way behind the probe because I never quite know where to launch, but we'll just uh, meet it on the other side of the moon. Which should be fine. So yes, just a matter of warping around the moon, watching the surface pass beneath us. Uh, Jebediah looking rather scared, actually, um, for Jeb. Oh no, he's smiling. And um, who is that? Haney? Uh, I think it's Haney. Is uh, also looking rather happy that she won't be stuck here for the rest of her days. Because that would not be great. Although if I had to die somewhere, I think I would pick space. Although probably not space. I'd pick Mars. Because space is, like, lame. Yeah, there's nothing there. Maybe Mars. Maybe intergalactic space battle uh, something cool like that I think yeah I think blaze of space glory is how I would pick to go out anyway so here we are back at our little um well our little fuel tank that will uh, provide us with the Delta V to return to low carbon orbit in the Hermes station our uh, home from, well well I'd say home away from home but it's more of a home right at home because it's like really it's only like a hundred kilometers away from home I mean I'm pretty sure I live further away from that when I go to university, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's just home. But anyway, yeah, our little uh, outpost in uh, uh, just outside of the front door, basically. But anyway, yeah, here we are, Red Origin 3 probe. Um, at some point, we're going to upgrade this life support, and I actually do do that today. I quieten down cars, I'm trying to record. One second, <laughs> it just went and closed my window because the cars were being very loud. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I do upgrade the life support on this today, but I bring it up an oxygen tank, not a the one that carries all three things, so yeah, fail. Um, but that'll be later. But yes, I, I do always plan these maneuvers back to um, back to Kerbin, uh, because while I do have more than enough Delta V on the uh, on the Spacecraft, I want to keep as much fuel as possible on the station because yeah, it's really annoying having to get fuel up there. Um, I've actually have got it down to a bit of more of a science because I never seem to be able to fly the fuel spacecraft, but today I do a little better. But yeah, so I mean, as little fuel as I could burn would be great. Uh, maybe I should build an, uh, one of those ion powered spacecraft. Well, eventually, I think I could probably have ion powered landers for. Um, the moon, but their, their floors, they can only uh, fly in the day, so if there was a crisis on the moon at night, they'd, uh, they'd die, and moon and nights are three days long, so they'd die, but uh, it's a small price to pay for, awesome, but maybe I'll just keep one of these around, so anyway, yes, doing our deorbit burn, and getting an encounter with the station, hopefully I won't screw it up this time, I've been rather terrible with encounters in uh, episodes of late, but that one seems fine, um, I'm not over deorbiting, but I'll probably do another deorbit burn, uh, just so that my relative lost isn't ridiculous when I go to encounter, but who knows? I I, I recorded this multiple days ago. I am far from sure. So yeah, I think actually if I just start burning here and just really null my velocity before I get anywhere near it, and I can also close in my encounter. Uh, my encounter there, you see, it's 200 meters now. Uh, my velocity has dropped significantly. Yeah, this is enough power I think to just slow down quite nicely, even with the big tank. But it's basically out of fuel now. So yeah. Anyway, uh, Hermes Station emerges out of the inky blackness and looks beautiful as always, covered in fueling vehicles, which I really must send home. I always leave them in space too long because I'm really lazy. Uh, <laughs> I'd be the worst at NASA. Just, oh, bring home the spacecraft. I don't want it. It takes so long to deorbit, man. I just gotta watch it. It's like, dude, we gotta bring him home. Shut up, man. Um, but yeah. Although I guess pretty much all of the supply spacecraft, except for Dragon, just burn up on re-entry, which isn't a bad thing, because it's a good way to get ready of trash, but not a great thing, because you can't use it again. Um, but anyway, yeah, here we are. Anyway, talking of uh, Hermes Station, we need to send a capsule up to bring back that, uh, well, that Kerbinaut we, uh, we just rescued. So I'm setting up an Ares-1, my workhorse spacecraft. 
Uh, yes, uh, our workhorse spacecraft for hauling Kerbals to orbit. It is rather useful, although I am obviously looking forward to getting bigger rockets so I can more easily launch larger, well, well my Ares 3 I decided, uh, designed a while ago, the kind of Dragon 2 type spacecraft, which I flew in testing and have never, I could put it on top of one of these rockets, but I don't really want to, and this is fine for now. I'm not having such a crew problem anymore, um, and I'm going to use those uh, Dragon type spacecraft for landing on Minmus and the Moon as well, like reusable landers, um, because they're quite good for that, and that is slightly reminiscent of what the dragons are supposed to be like, because they are going to hopefully send a dragon too, obviously unmanned, all the way out to Mars. But yes, anyway, we have our uh, close encounter with the station, or at least matching its orbit, and now we're going to go and land this, uh, but I will save the boredom of watching it fall through the atmosphere, and uh, just show you, touching it, uh, show you it touching down on the ocean, where we will recover it. And here we are, back in orbit, and we are behind the station, which is nice, because we can go into a lower orbit it than it and uh, catch up, which is slightly fuel saving, but it doesn't really matter if these have more than enough fuel. But anyway, we separate from the uh, first, uh, the second stage and use our uh, orbital uh, orbital maneuvering system, I guess that would be, the uh, little monoprint engines. But anyway, that was a fairly boring and Monday, well, routine uh, rendezvous. So here we are just docking to the station um, so that we can grab our crew. Yes! Uh, I think all of the docking ports are currently being used on the station. I may have to bring up more expansions. Or maybe just send the freaking fueling spacecraft home, Peter, you putz. Um, but anyway, yes, so I'm just going to do a bit of crew rotation and all of that. Um, and we'll show you all of this in four times time accelerate. Yes, we have to bring back... I think I'm going to bring back uh, Mitkin. He's been in orbit for so long. He must be getting tired. Um, and, yeah, and uh, and I think, obviously, the the... What's his name? The, the the person we saved, Hanye Kerman or something. Anyway, we'll just grab the science, of course, um, because we did get some science from the moon. Only a little bit, but uh, enough to be significant, so I'm going to put that in spacecraft um, and head back to Kerman. I have got a few things in the area, such as this, my uh, oxygen tank, which what really shouldn't be an oxygen tank, but I strap it on here anyway, uh, even though I thought it, well, at this point I thought it was the kind of all three different life support elements, but it wasn't. But anyway, yes, it is time to go home. You can see that we have 3 million, well, 3.1 million funds. We need 3.4, really. More like 3.5, because then we'll have money after it. So we do our deorbit burn and just uh, sc uh, scream back through the atmosphere with Mitgun, Gregvin, and Hanye, and then land semi-gently, uh, losing the engines on the ground. But everything is good. We have our science and our Kerbinauts back. But anyway, the big thing this episode, Minmus Base. Yes, this is a Pulsar, no, Pulsar 4M, the Pulsar 4 moon variant with its third stage, and today it is pushing a very important payload out to the moon. A very well-paying payload. This is the first part of our Minmus base, the habitation module. It's a slightly sleeker version of the one that's on the moon, and this will complete our mission, giving us enough, well, giving us almost, an, I think it does give us enough money to get the science center, but obviously we need a few more things. A few, a little bit more money to buffer so that we can still do missions. My chair has just gone insane for being creaky. I'm really sorry about that. Maybe I just got too excited. Anyway, yes, we ditched the uh, first of the three stages and push on into orbit. I'm hoping this is literally at the very kind of peak of well, it, I, it's pretty much going to use all of the Delta V it can. And, oh, there's a rainbow outside. Focus, Peter! Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, it, uh, the, Pulsar, the Pulsar 4 will just about get it to Minmus. Um, I think I will have some excess Delta V in the second stage, but yeah, anyway, so now we need to go and land this, and here it is, just touching down on the ocean, and luckily the payload is in orbit, so I can land as gently as I like, and that is basically zero velocity. And then letting it go and letting it just plunge. But anyway, here we are back in orbit, um, and I do determine that we do have enough Delta V in the third stage to go all the way to Minmus without any kick from the second stage, so that will have extra fuel for landing. So this has gone rather well. But yes, you can see those little black modules on the end. Those are fuel tanks and engines, which makes them look much nicer than uh, the one that I landed on the moon, which had just like normal fuel tanks, like uh, cylindrical, so they looked a bit janky. And it has proper landing legs and stuff, but it has the same uh, five-person crew capacity. And uh, currently very little life support. Um, it wouldn't support Kerbals for very long at all, but obviously I will be sending life support. But luckily, uh, this is Minmus, so it has a much quicker, it has a much quicker rotation, a much shorter rotational period, so I don't have to send out a giant battery like with the moon base, which has a three-day night, effectively. So you have to supply your Kerbals with electricity through that, and I don't have radiothermal generators, so I went with a giant, incredibly expensive battery. I think the battery I sent out there was about 50 grand. Um, that's why I don't make 
make profits on the bases I send places. Except this one, of course, until I upgrade it with life support modules um, and some kind of rover. Although I don't think this needs a rover because it's so easy to move, maneuver around Minmus. But here we are just landing at the second stage um, gently on the ground. Uh, gently enough, it's all there. So that we can get our money back for that. Anyway, back in orbit, um, we are just preparing everything for our journey to Minmus. We are in the correct trajectory. We're going to be in the right plane, and we're going to pick somewhere nice to land. Obviously, I'm going to land somewhere in the flats because the flats are nice to land on, and it means that I'll have an easy time putting a base down. Um, so yes, the uh, Pulsar 4M has performed more than admirably. Uh, the second, the third stage still has a additional fuel net, probably enough even to land if I really wanted. Um, but obviously I'm not going to do that. I'm going to land with the cool engines on the spacecraft and I'm going to ditch the um, the the second, uh, the second third stage into the surface of members. Anyway, so I have selected this little um, flat just, you can see here just where my mouse is now. I'm going to land there. I think that's nice because it's uh, there's looks like there's quite a few biomes around it, various flats, and it's not too far from the poles-ish, or it's basically equatorial. Um, but yeah, I think that should be quite good, and it's it's not too big and stuff. But yes, now I'm just setting this up for landing mode, getting rid of the probe I was using to control it forwards, and getting rid of the uh, second stage, uh, third stage. I'm going to keep them confused. And now we are in landing mode. I've set up the engines so that um, they burn on the center of mass. One of them is slightly more powerful than the other with thrust limiting. So yeah, but I fire them up, and they look rather nice. And this is quite a sleek looking lander, I think. Um, and the landing legs are nice and low down, like the basically the moon base thing, I didn't really use the correct parts for it, or maybe I didn't have them, but yeah. And that little uh, control module on top is detachable, but I will be leaving that on there for now because, you know, I want to be able to communicate with it and things, and potentially move it without a Kerbal inside. But yes, here we are just landing, and you will see it in one time's time accelerate. Those little landing gear legs are deployed, and here we are about to touch down on Minmus, and we do a bit of a <laughs> landing hop as is often, and then we just fall gently to the ground with loads of fuel left over, and we get 136,500 funds. And yes, that is all good. Anyway, so I am at the station. Um, now that that's there, we probably could have looked at it a little longer, Peter, geez. But I'm going to deorbit these fueling spacecraft. Um, so yeah, we're just going to bring this down so we get all of our money back, because we want to pick up all the scraps now, get as much money as possible, because most of my missions are interplanetary right now, so yeah. But anyway, I find a bunch of stuff in orbit, but you can see, yeah, 3.42 million at the top, pretty nice, we've got the money, we just need a little more. Anyway, so I find a second stage left in orbit, another one, and another one, so we land both of these, and then I also land the other fueling spacecraft now. So yeah, that's a, quite a lot of hardware, I think that's like 30 grand I just brought back. But anyway, I'm still not comfortable uh, buying the uh, Science Center now, even though I have the money. So I'm going to send a bit of fuel up so that I can do a mission to Minmus just to grab myself a, like 80 grand so that I have enough uh, money for a couple of uh, additional missions after this. Um, but yeah, we also need quite a bit of science because the main reason I'm really gunning for the Science Center, other than I'm quite stuck with technology and it's episode 32, I mean, come on, Peter, you're better than this, um, is uh, there's a jewel window coming up in like 60 days and I don't have the antenna to go to Jewel, and I'm not waiting for another um, <laughs> Jewel encounter, a uh, Jewel window, because that's going to be a long time ago. It comes about maybe once or twice in a Let's Play, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, yes, so the Pulsar 4, again, uh, taking our heavy payloads to orbit, and I'm going to try and get this as uh, precise as possible so that um, I don't overburn on fuel, basically. This is going to be the fueling mission I don't fuck up. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So I'm just uh, going to land at this second stage, and we'll watch the whole of this, because I like watching these occasionally. And I always set up the parachutes. I really should do this, like, before I take off, but I always set them to deploy at 500 uh, meters rather than a kilometer, so that I have more time in orbit. Uh, well, on orbit, to, you know, get into orbit. So yeah, I'm just going to close down these engines and uh, just land. I do like to leave these in occasionally, just to remind you how I do this. And that was pretty cutthroat. It uh, slowed down just in time. <laughs> Four times time, it's alright. That looked janky. But yeah, that was a very close landing. I, I let it come in really hot so that I could... Uh, uh, so that I would have enough time to get into orbit. Um, and we are in front of the station, which makes it easier to get ourselves... Um, an encounter with it, we just uh, go into a slightly higher orbit than it, and you can see that we'll do that in a second. Although, our orbital path is a little messed up, and we have pretty much run out of fuel in that second stage. But anyway, so it's fine because we have fuel on the spacecraft. Um, and I'm going to try and do this without using any of the payload fuel, just the fuel I take for this uh, for this specific mission. So yes, we have a pretty close encounter. I'm just going to fix my inclination, and then move into the station. Um, so yeah, that's just uh, burn south, I guess, would be what I want. 
And yeah, just bring it down. I think I can get it down to about four kilometers, and then I can just make the corrections on the way in. Um, and yeah, I think that's uh, close enough. Like it's the things disappeared, but I'm sure I will still encounter <laughs> because it's just. Um, I think it, uh, the uh, maneuver nodes measure um, orbital like that when the orbits cross, not your closest encounter. You should really use MacJab for finding a real closest encounter. But yeah, this has gone pretty well. I haven't totally fucked this up because I did it like non a moron for once, and now I'm just adjusting uh, my my separation, you can see I'm getting it down to reasonable uh, distances, and everything is rather nice. I still have fuel, those top uh, three little grey tanks that I've kind of wedged in the side, those are my uh, actual orbital manoeuvring fuel, um, and then I have some RCS as well, and then the big tanks, I don't want to burn anything from them, because that is payload fuel, and I don't want to waste that. And I actually don't burn any of the payload fuel on my manoeuvre. See, it's not that hard, I make these fueling missions look so hard, but they're not. Um, and I'm just going to do the final slowdown with uh, monopropellant because um, I don't want to, well, I don't want to burn through any more fuel. Although I do have the tiniest little smidge in, um, yeah, you can see I just burn off the tiniest little smidge from those tanks. And slow down just in time before I ding that spacecraft that is very expensive. And then I'm in a really annoying position to dock, so I, uh, you know, do a little bit of uh, twisty maneuvering to try and... Well, just try and get into a good place. When you're in that kind of position, you're like, which way do I go now? Do I go down or forwards or sideways? But I just kind of, I don't know, just fire loads of thrusters until I'm somewhere near the uh, near the docking port. Although it has, well, it's slightly more precise than that. I do like to think I'm relatively good at this game by now. Um, yeah, unlike all the other games I play. Like, I'm playing Spore right now, and I'm just like, you don't know how to play Spore. It's like, yeah, have you ever just picked up a game and known how to play? Although I don't think they were saying I'm terrible. I think they were saying it's just frustrating to see someone who can't play the game when you can. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so there we are, docked on, and we can transfer all of the fuel in there. And obviously just land the second stage, and smash that engine, because these are supposed to land on water. Um, but anyway, we have fueled up the spacecraft, we have put all the life support in it, we have realized that the uh, extra life support tank is just oxygen, which I guess is fine, but, I mean, you can't live for that long without water, so, I mean, eh, whatever. And I think the electric charge limit in this uh, game is ridiculous, or at this mod even. But yes, yeah, so we'll just do a quick burn to... Uh, get into position uh, and head on to Minmus. But annoyingly, notice in my cupboard alarm clock, uh, in 10 days, 3 hours and 3 minutes, the Buzzard 2 needs to make its correction burn to uh, encounter Moho, which is a really important mission because I have so many contracts riding on that. I have like probably half a million funds. Probably more, probably like 700,000 funds riding on that mission, and it's so far gone really badly. But anyway, yes, uh, and the problem is, I will be uh, I will get to where I need to do my orbital insertion around Mimbus 16 minutes before I have to go and do the Buzzard 2 burn. And I think it'll take me about that amount of time to do the burn. So it's going to be pretty cutthroat. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I was all like, oh my god, I don't want to lose this spacecraft. Um, obviously I value Jebediah more than I value the Buzzard 2, but 700 grand, man! I can buy a new Jebediah. Um, talking of which, why is my 3D printed Jeb? He's fine. He's probably fine. Anyway, so yes, I'm just getting my uh, encounter all set up so that I can uh, maneuver into Minmus and uh, get into orbit. And I'm probably going to think I'm going to land at the base for this, because this is I'm being paid to plant a flag on Minmus, by the way. That's why I'm going. And to grab a little science. But I think I will land at the base, just do an inspection, make sure everything's good. And I don't think I've done science on those flats before, so that's good. Um, and yeah, it'll be uh, rather nice. It'll be a little more life support in there and stuff. But I won't be able to get it because I don't have any fuel pipes. Um, but yeah. So there, that is all done, and we're just going to move in and just watch that timer for Buzzard 2 tick down to about 16 minutes. But I'll be much closer to the sun. That's the one with those weird arc jet thrusters, which I didn't quite understand. But they rely heavily on electric charge, but I'll be much closer to the sun. But anyway, after this insertion burn, that will be it for the episode. Because, uh, well, we will see Buzzard 2 in the next episode, um, and we will see all of this in the next episode, and we will finally get our new science center in the next episode. So you better come back for it. It should be pretty good. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.